You're in my name. It's in the screen or was before. But I don't know you yet. Specifically, I want to find out who's who. Now, how many people today are investors? Right? Could you please raise your hand, guys? People who are investing in companies. Now, how many are founders? Founders of companies, all right? Cool, cool. Government folk or semi-government, please hands up. All right, cool. Nonprofits? I'm getting an idea. All right. Now, my job is to train people how to pitch. A pitch is a very short talk, and today I'm going to show you an example. Now, this example will be done using one of you, one of the people in this audience. I'm going to invite this person on stage to join me. We're going to have a conversation, maybe around 10 minutes. I hope so. After those 10 minutes, I'm going to show you an example using the content that the person has given to me. A real life case. And after that, I'm going to give you a few insights from a study I've done. Now, what I've noticed in the Baltics, including Finland, is people are not always active among audiences. And the day before, I've been closely observing you guys. Not in a creepy way. But I've been looking at you. I've been looking at how people are engaged. Whether they're sitting with their laptops, whether they're sitting with their phones, whether they're looking on the ground. I'd like to change that a little bit. Guys, I'll involve a few of you. What's a pitch to you specifically? Now, sir, in the red cardigan right there, you're looking very comfy. What is your name? Yes, could you speak up a little bit? Andrew? Gedru. Excellent. Thank you for the runner. Can you, is it on? Is the microphone on, miss? Cool. Can you speak up again? Your name? Gather. Cool. What do you do? Oh, now Excellent. It's Excellent. Could you repeat your name again? Gedros. Gedros. What do you do, man? Uh, we are making mobile wallet. You're making a mobile wallet? Yep. Is it challenging? There's a lot of mobile wallets. It is. It is. Understood. Now, would you care to help me out a little bit? What's the pitch to you? It's an open-ended question. Just sell company in 30 seconds. Sell a company in 30 seconds, understood. Is it easy to sell something in 30 seconds to a group of people in front of you? Mm, it's challenging. It's challenging. What are, the, what are the top three challenges that you face? At, well, at least one. To save a problem that you're solving. The biggest problem that you're solving. And what is the biggest problem with pitching then? Is that it? Explaining the problem? Yeah, explain the problem and uh, save a solution as well. And this very limited time and get attention and uh, explain what you're doing. Understood. Your name again, sir? Gedros. Gedros. You, a mobile payment wallet? Yep. Understood. Gedros. And the name of the company? Uh, go and pay. Go and pay. Understood. Thank you very much, Gedros. I will take one more volunteer for today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, so you don't have to run very far. I'll take it so somewhere from here. Now, no, you can also suggest. I can run. You can run. You, yeah. Very good. I love running myself. Here's what I'd like to do. A very basic test. Now, I'll pick an individual. Sir, in a lovely vest. Hi. With a, may I take you? Are you fine with this? Yes? What is your name? Martin. Your mic next to you? Okay. One moment. Martin, can you help me out? What is the name of the spine man behind you? Uh, Gedrus. What is the name of his company? Uh, go and pay. Go and pay. What do they do? Uh, mobile wallet. Mobile wallet. And what did we talk about? Uh, you mean like your conversation now? Just now. Just now. Yeah, you were talking about what's the pitch, uh, uh -huh. what's the, the challenges of the pitch, of uh -huh. doing the pitch. What is the challenge of the pitch? Uh, explaining the problem. And what is so hard about it? I don't know. if. It, you want my opinion or just... Your opinion a little bit. I'm engaging you. What is your name again? Okay, Martin. Martin. Yeah. Understood. What is the biggest challenge about the pitch then for you? Uh, for me, uh, for example, uh, to get the people to understand the problem. Because not if the problem is complex, it has a lot of complex complexity, uh, it's hard to, uh, to get people to understand it. Understood. Yeah. Quick question though. Why did I ask you to summarize what this individual 
has said just now. I think you want to check uh, if we had the attention and we can remember. It's a slightly tedious exercise. It's not the most exciting thing, but what else, man? Everybody who wants to get involved, feel free to shout. What are the reasons? Why did I just do this? Guys, feel free to speak up. What is the point? Sir, why did I just do this? Feel free to shoot directly. Yes. Thank you, by the way, Martin. Thank you. Could you please speak up again a little bit? Uh, you wanted to check if uh, the first person explained his thoughts, thoughts in a way that everybody else understands. Understood. What is your name, sir? Nerius. Nerius? Nerius. Nerius. Yes. Pardon me, this is my 10th time in Lithuania, but I always struggle with your names. It took me quite a bit of time to learn Mindugas or Mindaugas. So your name once more, and pardon me. Nerius. Nerius. Ned, Ned use. Ned use. Ned use. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to get to the point, guys. At the core of what I do is a very basic concept, memory. Now, either you're explaining a problem, a solution, you're showing what a product is, you're explaining something to a customer, client, whatever. The point being is if they don't remember what the heck you said, why are you wasting their time? Be it 30 seconds or three minutes. Now you did well. He remembered most of the stuff we talked about. But next to us, there's a dome, and in total, there was around 52 pitches in that dome. There was a jury, and sometimes that jury was rotating. And this very morning, I had a conversation with one of those jury members, and I asked him, right, you guys picked nine companies. How many of those companies do you remember? He named one, the, not, the one that he picked as a jury member. Now, that's just around 60 of them or so, 52 companies. I go for a massive amount. A single venture capital firm can go around the same amount. I just happen to do it in a conveyor belt, very fast. I train people how to pitch, and I need to listen to them. I need to remember what the heck they talked about. That's the basics of it. Now, here's the struggle, though, and here's the problem. Within six days or so, 75% of what you said is going to be lost. It's called the Ebenhaus forgetting curve. It's very difficult to stay in the minds of the audience unless you keep repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating. So instead of telling you the theory, I want to show you now. I need a founder, an individual from this room who's willing to share their story with me on stage. It's going to be that conversation I promised you. I'm going to ask tough questions. Sometimes I'm going to be asking broader questions. Sometimes you're going to be giving me vague answers and I'm going to clarify those answers. After that, I'm going to show you a pitch. But I need a volunteer. Guys, we have one. One, all right. Sir, please, please join me on stage and a hand of applause for this fine man. Please, please. Is the mic on? Let's test it out. Can you test it? One, Can you two, hear him? One, two. Excellent. Okay. Hi, my name is Gleb. Simon. Simon. What do you do, Simon? I work at a startup. It's called Yellow Hammock. We do chatbots that are specific, perfected for selected industries. Yellow hammock. Yellow hammock. Yellow hammock, understood. That's a weird name. Simon is your name. Simon is my name. Now, by the way, this, some of this is going to be quite tedious. I invite you to pay attention to what we're doing because some of the stuff, especially the founders of the room, you will need to be able to do yourself. If I'm asking the name several times, that means the name is difficult to understand for me at the very least as an audience member. Keep that in mind. I will not always be making eye contact with all of you, mostly with Simon here, but occasionally I'll come back to you. So please, a little bit of patience. Now we have a, a voice from the sky. We have some protection. Some protection. Yellow hammock. Yellow hammock. What do you guys do? We do artificial intelligence chatbots perfected for industries. What is your background? Uh, my background, I worked four years in customer experience at NASDAQ. NASDAQ. Is this NASDAQ OMX? Sorry? Is this as NASDAQ OMX? Is this like a Nordic? Exactly. Understood. And you decided to focus on chatbots. I decided to focus on chatbots. How come? NASDAQ, chatbots, that's quite a stretch. Um, they both focus on customer experience, how to make it better. And what does that mean specifically? For how you. to make the customer uh, have a better experience when interacting with a business. 
And right now, the customer experience sucks. Is that what you're addressing this? It doesn't suck, but we're making it better. You're making it better. So why do you need to make something better that is not so bad? It's kind of okay. Why do you want to make it be better so much? Because good is better than okay. <laughs> well, let's put it like this. You have a choice. You worked in a stock exchange. I'll put it like this. And, and you had a lot of experience in that. Four years, that's plenty. You could have gone and worked later on in a larger firm. Yet you decided to do this. So all this choice, all the applications, all the problems you could be solving, you picked this one. Why? And to I'm asking honest, the same question. Okay, to be honest, it's because Zuckerberg just had released the Messenger platform. I went to a hackathon, did some chatbots, saw the opportunity in the market. We had some clients going in and it started going up. I, my salary increased. That's why I decided to join Yellow Hammock full time. Understood. So you met them at a hackathon? Yes. You did not originate the idea, but you joined them? Yes. What is your position in this company? I'm the CEO. You're the CEO? Yes. How many people do you have? We have nine people. Nine people. And who are they, more or less? We have some designers. We have some copywriters for the chatbots content and programmers. All right. How many developers? How many copywriters? Okay. So we have four developers. Yes. One of them is focusing on artificial intelligence. Yes. Now we have one copywriter, one social media, uh, media manager, and one um, designer. Clear. And one CEO. And I'm the CEO. How long have you been operating for again? Two years. Two years. Do you have current recurring revenue? Any traction that you can share? Um, we have recurring revenue. We're self-sufficient and expanding to staff markets with this revenue. Do you have anything that you can be explicit about and clearly tell me what the numbers are? Okay, so we we'll close about 50K in revenue every month. So 50,000 euros in monthly recurring yes. revenue? Is that correct? Yes. Are you currently fundraising? We are not. Are you currently hiring? Um, we are always hiring because we have some huge problems with artificial intelligence. What is the developers. single biggest problem in terms of developments? Um, there are not a lot of specialists that know how to do NLP. All right, natural, natural language, language processing. processing. Now, natural language processing. So there's not a lot of specialists, and you're based out of Vilnius? Out of Vilnius. So you're hiring people locally? Locally for connections. For connections, that's why it's so challenging so far because you're in this market. Exactly. What are your markets in terms of your product, your chatbot? Okay, so we have two main pillars. Yes. The first of them being restaurants and the food business. Yes. The second one is the hotel business. Restaurant, food, hotel business. Yes. Understood. And why did you focus on those? Um, we had some experience. We had some clients yeah. that we knew. They were the first ones to come in, and that's how we chose them. What did you study? This is personal now. Right? I didn't study. You didn't study. Fair enough. So you went instantly into entrepreneurship. Yes. Entrepreneurship school. Yes. Cool. How long have you been an entrepreneur for? Um, two years. Two years, and then before that it was NASDAQ. Yeah, and I had some side projects cool. as a co-founder. It didn't go very well. All right, so this is your third, fourth, fifth project? It's my third project. Third, understood. Yes. And what do you do in NASDAQ? Um, I did customer experience. Customer experience, so, and what does that mean? Um, making the interaction between who? those who invest mm -hmm. and the company better. Who invests normally in, in tech stock, I presume, NASDAQ? Yes. So who normally would you deal with? Okay, so normally from 30 to 50 years old um, that don't interact a lot with technology, uh, usually. So what would they ask you normally? Top three most annoying questions you had to face. How to log in. <laughs> um, uh, then how to, yeah. uh, how to log in. Yeah. What are these letters that you see? Because like there was a the huge rise in the stock exchange. There's a huge trend. Yeah. People want to invest and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't really know what investing is at its core. Got it. So the learning process for them, is pretty hard. There's not a lot of information out there. So I had to explain all the different concepts. Such as? Yes, uh, such, such as. as, I know what does NASDAQ mean at its core. And what why, do you do? How what do you, do you tell them? How are we different from other stock exchanges? So what would, how would that go? Let's I say I'm 40, 50, them. whatever. I wasn't the one telling them. Um, but uh, what, would, what would you do? What I would do is NASDAQ is just like another stock exchange. Just it's way better in the user usability. It's easier to invest and it's 
usually invests in tech companies that are the most profitable at the moment. 30, 50 or so? What, 40, 50, 30, 50? What was the range, the age range? 30, 50. 30, 50. And how many conversations did you have per week? I did not have the conversations. You did not have conversations. So how would you address those? Is I wasn't the guy responding to emails. So, but who were you essentially? I was the one creating the answers. Oh, like a knowledge base. Right. So those, and how many would your team members receive in terms of questions? How many questions did they receive? Okay, so we operate mainly on the North America market and the Benelux. I got it, but how many um, questions so did So it was receive? like three, 4,000 a day. Three, 4,000 a day, and your, your job was to automate all of that? Yes. And how, what, how large was your database, your knowledge base for that? Um, we had about 300 questions and answers. And how you built it out from scratch or you expanded no. it? Um, I updated it. Updated. So you know, we already had the questions and answers. Yeah. I had to update them, yeah. make the language better, uh, make the responses more concrete and useful for the user. Clear. And your industry is food, hotels, and restaurants. And restaurants. They need it the most. Yes. How large the market is right now? What, which is the first market you're going for? Uh, sorry? Which is the first market you're going for? We have today's plane season. <laughs> um, the first one was the restaurant market. The restaurant market? Yes. Which countries? Um, Lithuania, England, uh, the UK, and France. And France. So they, they needed the most? Um, they didn't need it the most. We had the most competences in these countries. Understood. Sure. And so you're, would you be potentially interested in fundraising in the future to expand your reach? Yes. How much would you potentially be looking for? About 500 to 800,000. To do what? Hire more people? Um, to hire more, more people in Southern uh, countries yeah. where the languages aren't as Such basic as. as English or French. French. There would be languages like Portuguese, German, other uh, Nordic languages. Final question again. Um, so this is yellow hammock. Hammock, yellow hammock. It's a, a artificial intelligence chatbot for restaurants, hotels, and food and industry. Food industry in general. Understood. So this, this is correct. Yes. But the final thing is. Why did you want to get this done? So you managed to hack a phone. Thank you for the honesty, by the way. We're almost done, guys. The why. Why do you care about this, man? You want to sell this? You want to just close and earn a lot of money? What do you, why are people working with you for, on this? This is what I'm most interested in. Okay. So um, it's because when we use the customer, I know the conversational boss like Siri or something, when you try to ask them, Order me a coffee from Taste Map. Okay, we get these kind of answers, right? Yeah. So we want to make it a little bit better. We Why? want to answer these questions. Why? To make it suck less. And why does it suck right now? Remind me. Because it doesn't answer. It doesn't answer. And you, you believe you can solve that? Yes, Where we Google do solve Where Google cannot that. yet solve it. Sorry? Where Google cannot yet solve that fully. My yes. watch keeps talking to me. Right. Because they're not concentrating into a few industries. They're not selecting them. Uh, We're perfecting them. Understood. Simon, thank you very much. Hand of applause you. for this fine man, please. Now, I have around seven minutes left. I will use them wisely. Now, I'm going to do a pitch for the people who came just now and don't know what happened. This was a bit tedious, I understand, so thank you for your attention. Simon of Yellow Hammock. Is that correct? Understood. Hi, my name is Simon. I'm the CEO of Yellow Hammock. We're a chatbot. We're an AI-powered chatbot. But the one that's specifically focused on free industries, hotels, restaurants, and the food industry folks. I worked four years in NASDAQ, and my job was to maintain and cultivate a knowledge base, meaning it's a series of questions for people between 30 and 50 years old who invest into tech stocks and have no idea how to do it. My job was to figure out that how to answer questions about how to log in, what all the tickets mean. That was my job, and I worked with customer support people that would daily, in total, get anything from 3,000 to 5,000 requests like that every goddamn day. Now, if we would focus on a chatbot right now, anything from Siri to Google's, and you have one of those people ask a question, it will get something like that. And then this is where I pull out the phone. 
We want to change that experience because we believe that voice is going to be the dominant search engine. Yellow Hammock is a chatbot for those people. We want to help those. We have seven people working on this, four engineers, one copywriter that's focused on making those questions, all those answers accessible. Everything from social media to design. We want to grow this. We want to grow this in France. We want to grow this in the United Kingdom. We're not currently fundraising, but we will be in a, in a year or so. We're going to be raising around 700,000 euros. Until then, we are hiring people. We're hiring data scientists and engineers who are know the insides and out, the insides of natural, natural language processing. My name is Simon. I run Yellow Hammock. We're a chatbot. And we built this chatbot to help all those, all those people who have stupid questions but need them answered. Thank you very much. That took me around a little less than three minutes, if I'm not mistaken. How was that? What did I do? Guys in the back. I, I barely can see you. There's a little shade there. We have a runner close by. Anybody, guys. We have a microphone right there. What did I do just now? A pitch. A pitch. Made a story. I made a story. How did I make that story? I summarized. I condensed it. What else? By the way, tell me if I'm too loud, all right? I'm normally used to using my voice, not the mic. Guys, one more. What did I do just now? I repeated it. But what else? I sold, but how? You was clear. I was clear. Understood. Simon is a very articulate man. What were the key differences between us? Shorter sentences. What else? What about my body? I know it's a weird question. You are confident. What? How can you tell somebody is goddamn confident? I use emphasis. I let the audience know what's important. What else? It's a new vest. I, I, I like it. What else? Although I like your jacket. It got a little too hot for me, so I have to take mine off. What else did I do? Guys, let's take it down. What co does confidence mean? We just had this. I ask this a lot. People tell me, oh, you're more confident. Oh, you're more fluent. Shorter sentences. Yes. Thank you very much. What is your name, sir? Remis. Remis. Thank you, Remis. Now, I wish I had more time. What I showed you just now, I do with founders. I normally have two days to do it, sometimes less. I wanted to show it to you, and now I have around 1 to 40, 140 left. I've studied pitches like this for one of the largest conferences in this region called Slush. Around 22 and a half thousand people visited last year, 2017. I took two years worth of Slush 100 pitches. That is 190 founders, technology founders that were pitching for three minutes and answering questions from anything from one and a half to three minutes. And here's the takeaways for you, all the founders in the room and all the potential founders in the room. Now, I don't use slides as you noticed. What I do use is a flip board. The average words per minute count as in how fast they spoke, is 150. Women were a little slower than men. What does that matter? The 150 words per minute is when you're stressed, when you're on stage. As Simon will testify, when a lot of people are looking at you, your, your beats per minute goes up. Your speech increases the pace of it. But here's what it leads to. One of the most common words that kept being repeated is so. So um, 
we have created uh, an AI um, filler. Filler and repetition such as th th this can take up to 20% of a pitch, especially during a Q&A. And the reason why you add filler, guys, you're racing. You're afraid that people will think you're silly or that you're not going to use all the opportunities you can get. I can relate to that. I started there. If you slow down and utilize pauses, you don't have to speak so fast. You can improve your pitch and most importantly, the comprehension and the memory and the focus. Now, the final thing, and this is for the questions and answer sessions for all the founders in the room when you're pitching. One second. This is how much you can wait until answering question. On average, people start coming up with an answer around 60, 600 milliseconds before they actually answer it. Now, for the founders, I noticed in the study that much, much less. So here's what it means. Sir, can you ask me a question, a tough one? Let's say, imagine I'm a founder of a company and you're an investor. Your name? Yes. Hi, my name is Pranas. Pranas? Pranas, yeah. Pranas. Ask me a tough question. I know it's a bit of putting you on the spot. For like example, a tough one, a classic one. Okay, for example, when will you become profitable? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we were uh, thinking about this, yeah, and we've uh, profitability is currently on, uh, in our pipeline, and we're currently with it. That's a, how a classic response to that looks like. I kid you not. When you're transcribing all of those, you see all of those ums, oohs, and ahs. Instead, I'm going to show you very quickly. Could you ask me another question? Pranas. When is your next uh, fundraising planet? Thank you. Let me think about this a little bit because we've been talking about this for quite a bit. Our plans for fundraising, we have two scenarios. One, in three months, we're going to raise around 500,000 euros. In a year, we're looking for 2 million. Sir, did I answer your question? Thank you is fine. You don't have to say thank you. That's a very good question. That's a cliche. But just say thank you. Or think about it. You can wait a second or so, statistically, until the person already starts feeling awkward. By buying this time, you're going to give a more meaningful answer, and we're going to be more respectful, and you're going to look stronger on stage. These are my basic takeaways. And for all the investors in the room, the final bit, there's a study that's been done at TechCrunch Disrupt Pitches. Six years worth of them. Men, women, all, everybody. There's two types of questions sometimes people ask. Promotion-oriented and prevention-oriented. Prevention would be how you're going to protect your bottom line. And a promotion one would be how do you see yourself growing in the next year or so? This will be an exciting market. Female founders tend to be asked this prevention questions a lot more the male ones. And here's the effect of that. If you don't, as a founder, 85% of you will answer it. If it's a prevention question, you'll answer it, well, we're currently protecting it like that. As in, you'll face the same orientation. But that will mean that on average, you'll raise seven times less funding based on a study. They've experimented. It's, it's proven. So when you're answering a question, guys, formulate it in a way that frames it around growth and not just tries to protect the bottom line or prove that you know what you're talking about. And the VCs in the room, my final thing, when you ask a female founder a question, think through the thing. Try not to ask prevention questions. Try to ask promotion questions. Show them that they can grow a company. On this note, guys, you've been lovely. My name is Gleb. I train people how to pitch, and it's been fun. Thank you. Thank you.